rates, they've been elevated. There's the 10 year. It's just a smidge under 4%, Josh. So you, you've had elevated rates. You've got this NASDAQ 100 rebalance. Maybe that's been weighing on the, uh, the mega caps a, a little bit. But what's your perspective here uh, of what the real state of this trade is? I think we're going into an earnings season now that is expected to be down 7 or 8%. Uh, it would be the third consecutive down uh, earnings season. And I think what the market is sniffing out here is that those projections are probably worse than what we'll actually get. If you look at some of the early reporting companies, you had a lot of beats. If you look at the way uh, last quarter went, you had a, a, a really bad expectation and things came out pretty okay. Um, and I think investors like when the bar is really low. I think investors really like the idea that with estimates down as much as they are, you're mostly jumping out of the basement window. So I think that that is helping as we get into these first couple of reports that will start coming out Thursday and Friday. Uh, it doesn't hurt that you've got the banks up first. The banks are, I think, making more money than a lot of people thought they could have. Don't forget, the banks don't really hurt as much from an inverted yield curve as they benefit from an elevated overall interest rate picture. And that's the only thing that's changed from last quarter to this quarter. Combine that with the industrial sector, 90% of the names in that group are above their 200-day moving average. That is a free-for-all rally going on right now. And so I think even if big tech takes a little bit of a pause because of something technical, like an index rejiggering, it probably doesn't matter that much in the grand scheme of things when you have, quote-unquote, the right stocks, banks and industrials set up to deliver something good for investors. All right, so Shan, uh, welcome back. Uh, it's great to see you again. And to have you here. Um, what do you make of this trade? We haven't talked to you in a while. So it was a surprise to many uh, how strong it's been. And now what for the second half? Now, you do have to get through the, the rebound. It's going to take the weighting down of uh, the most mega of, of mega caps. Chris Harvey says that it's going to reduce, of Wells Fargo, of course, is going to reduce the concentration risk that many have been talking about, right? It's been such a top-heavy trade. But it's going to uh, create some selling pressure among the Uber caps. Now, it might be short-lived. And many suggest you buy the dip anyway, but how do you view it? Well, I mean, if you look at what we were coming into July with, we were overbought for five weeks on the S&P 500. We were overbought for eight weeks on the NASDAQ. So not necessarily surprising to see some of the weakness that we're experiencing here. I think to think about the second half of the year and the divergence that we're seeing in some of these strategy targets, there's an expectation that to get to some of these targets, you have to have declines in the second half of the year. And that has to come from tech. And so if you look at this overbought scenario, it leads to one of two things. Number one, we could see some overall weakening in the S&P 500 and certainly the NASDAQ. Number two, it could lead to some of the breadth that we anticipate. I think the important point here is that if you're looking at earnings and you're expecting tech earnings to be flat this quarter, and then you're looking at the second half of the year, there has to be continued pricing power for technology to justify the multiples that we're seeing, which compared to the rest of the S&P 500 are upwards of where we saw them in 2003. And so I think that for us, you know, thinking about defensiveness on the second half of the year, it does relate almost entirely to this tech trade and the fact that we've seen so much piling in, whether it's from AI or, for a lesser reason, the weaker dollar. Yeah, Steph, and, and by the way, Dan Ives, who's been one of the biggest tech bulls, suggests you got 12 to 15 percent more over the second half for some of these names. For somebody who's, you know, underweight the sector, how do you think about uh, that call? Yeah, I am he says he says he believes a new tech bull market has begun to take shape. Well, he's a bull, right? Sure. I mean, and I think there is a place for tech. It's 18% of my portfolio. It's not 35, which is what my benchmark is. But, and the reason I have so much exposure, even though I'm underweight relative, is because there are these very powerful themes. Shannon just mentioned AI. You got cloud. You got data center. You got cybersecurity. I own all. I have a lot of exposure there. But you know also I have been net net selling, trimming. Yeah, you've been trimming Meta, for example. Meta, Broadcom, LAM Research. But I have been adding to IBM, which is actually cheap and la and has lagged. And, and Fortinet was a fairly new position for me. It's done really nicely so far. What I would just say is I'm, if you step back, I'm so encouraged that we're starting to see a broadening out in the market. Modestly. No, not modestly. You're starting 
starting to see energy perk up, industrials are perking up, materials are perking up, financials are not going down anymore. So, I mean, we'll have to see if they if this can continue. But I think the reason we are seeing a broadening out is because the economy is better than expected, better than anybody's can, talking can I about. Back up what at, she said? Hold on a sec. Two point three percent. When she's finished, we're at two point three percent on the Atlanta Fed GDP now. No one thought we were going to be two or three percent in, in GDP. Everyone's talking about that we're in a recession. We're not in a recession, and the reason why is it all points to last week, all of that job data that we got.